think we are live on the Brush by Brandy Facebook and YouTube channel. Um, I hope you guys can see us okay. We're uh, experimenting a little over on YouTube, so Facebook, thank you as always for being patient with us. Uh, my name is Brandy. I'm the owner and artist behind Brush by Brandy, and we paint here live with you guys every Thursday night. So it's Thursday night. My husband, Sean, is here behind the camera, and he's going to help answer some questions while we're live. So anything that you'd like to know, pop on. And um, and we'll go through it. So really quick, anybody over on YouTube, you want to throw out a comment? Make sure that you can see it without turning your phone sideways. Um, boy, their field of view is, is crazy. It's really big. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so it is the the view is always a little bit different. We always had that on Instagram. Um, last week we had the orientation wrong. It wouldn't it wouldn't allow me to go live with the with the horizontal. So we just went it went with it, and we're trying to correct that this week. So it's always fun to try to figure out new things. Um, but yeah, that was our experience before that they kind of had a fisheye lens on them on, on YouTube. So, all right, you guys. So, uh, we are back here live tonight and last week we put the paint finish on this piece here that's behind me. We're going to continue working on this piece. Um, I wanted to check with you guys and see, do you guys want to go over the paint finish again? Because I have a side that I haven't done yet and I'll do the side with you guys if you want to do the paint finish again. Um, otherwise, let me show you what I have to put on the front of it. Is this where I put up our voting buttons? Uh, yeah. Is there? I think there is an option for voting. <laughs> anyway, just oh, uh, it's sideways on YouTube. Is it? Right. Can you turn it? Well, uh, let's see if I. No, that's just gonna switch the camera back and forth. Well, There's no yeah, other. No, don't flip that. No, I like, know that. Turn the whole, turn yeah, I know the whole that. Phone. Let's see this. Ta-da! Yeah, of course it's going to. Did that work? I think you're fine there. That's never the problem. All right. Tell us if that looks any better, YouTube. This is the it's same It's just problem. you're not getting the horizontal view. It's the same problem we were That's having all. last week with people telling us that the orientation was wrong, but then when we flipped it, it wasn't right either. Just have a couple more drinks and everything works out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as long as you're not driving. Yeah, just, uh, I don't know, turn the camera off and just watch. Just, or listen. Just, or just listen. listen. Your headphones I on like that. Turn watch. the camera off and just watch. All right. So last week we painted this piece and I'll ask you guys if you want to go over the paint finish again because I do have a side that I need to go ahead and put paint on so we can do that if you guys want to do the paint finishing again. But this is where I landed on the front of the piece. I do have paint on it and the couple uh, the paint colors that I used on this are Wise Owl paint in the main colors Vintage Duck Egg is the uh, soft blue with some green undertones. Hey, I'm sorry. I just That's just what I do. I interrupt on a daily basis. I'm just going to throw this out there. Not... Well, a shout out. Is Sheila really on? Oh, Sheila. Oh my gosh, we haven't seen you in so long. Sorry, I don't mean to call people I, out. No, but... I, it's because we noticed. We missed you. We, I'm glad to see you. I hope you're doing okay. Um, um, I've seen Sheila in comments though, so I know she's been around. I know she's been okay. So we've Oh, she's just a, yeah, one of those stalkers. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I do that sometimes too. Just creep in the background a little bit. It's okay. That's how I got married. Okay, anyway. so, so uh, Vintage Duck Egg is my main body color. This charcoal gray that I used for a little bit of shading on the edges is called Leather Vein. And then I used a little bit of Isles Avenue, which is a, a soft kind of creamy ivoryish white um, in here. So those are my three colors, Weather Vein, Vintage Duck Egg, and Isle Avenue. Isle Av. It's abbreviated, so I'm, I'm just saying Avenue, but it's not spelled out. Okay, and then my color scheme was kind of inspired by two things. One of them is this. This is a decoupage paper from Redesign with Prima. Um, let me tell you the name of this one. This is called Neutral Florals. I like that. For the people that don't know Sheila, who is Sheila? Sheila is... is <laughs> and she says, I'm Sheila. Sheila is someone who's been with us for a long time. She watched, watched with us every week for I don't know oh, how years. long. She keeps us yeah. entertained every week. So we notice when she's she's my HR department. Okay, so this is my package here from Redesign with Prima. It's their decoupage tissue paper, and I threw a link up in my Facebook post. I can add it to the YouTube description when I get off uh, for a link for Redesign with Prima where to find this paper. But the colors in it are spot on, and you can see how when you have a product like this, it makes it really easy to kind of pick color inspiration. The other place I chose my colors from was this has a black marble top on it, and I'm not going to change it. It's actually a really pretty, nice marble top, so I'm going to run with it and let that be my nice dark top. I'll probably do something dark down on the legs, and I'm just going to run with it. So this paper was one place I got inspiration from, and I also want to use this transfer here, uh, which has 
you can see it ties in the same colors. This is called Minty Roses, and we're going to apply some of this tonight. Any votes on whether you guys want to see the paint finish or not? One thing I feel bad about is that YouTube's fisheye puts them way in the back of the yeah, class. Yeah, like they're in the back of the class. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Holy you're moly. Not being, you're not being punished back there. <laughs> Yeah, but but you got to get the camera like you, all you, sir, in, in the back. I feel like you guys are like looking up my nose right now and stuff. I'm, so your complexion yeah, right now. I don't yeah. know how my pores look in that close. I def. <laughs> okay, so minty roses is another thing that I'm going to use on this piece, and you can see again that it ties in those colors. So I do this a lot where when I'm just not sure of a direction, I'll choose a product that I want to use. And then I'll use this and pull colors out of. And that's kind of what I did here is I knew I wanted to use this. I also applied these molds to this. These are also from Redesign with Prima. And I cast these in amazing casting resin. So those were added. And they're going to be my hardware backs. So I drilled them out. And I'm going to stick my hardware through them when I'm all done. So we're going to do the front. And we're going to do, uh, let's see, we're 50-50 right now between paper and... Oh, I, I want to know, do you guys want to see the paint finish? Because I already have the paint on the front. So if you guys, don't, if you guys Look, already caught ahead. it last week... And you don't want to see it again. If you want to see the paint finish again, I'll turn it to the side and we can we can do the paint finish. If not, then I'll just go ahead and we'll start working on the front. Yeah, just carry just like Trish says, just carry on for sake for time's sake. Okay. Yeah, I know it gets short, and I try to fit you know a lot of information here. It can get an, uh, can get a little overwhelming. Okay. So what do I plan to do on the front? Once I have my paint finish complete, I kind of break this down into pieces, and this is how most of my videos are. Where I will give you a bunch of pieces. And it's not necessarily that you have to follow your piece exactly all the way through and do all the same steps, but you can pull out puzzle pieces and say, oh, I like the paint finish she did on that piece. And I like the decoupage on that piece. And I like the waxes on that piece. And you can kind of combine them. It's like a choose your own adventure novel where you can make your own finishes. So from here, I'm going to take and we're going to add a little bit of wax accents to this. So I'm going to choose, this is my Caddy of Brushes, and these are just really random artist brushes of a variety of sizes, and then I've got wax brushes. And then I have everything over here from chip brushes that I've used for wax. I don't wash them every time. Uh, these are just some, you know, inexpensive, fluffy brushes that I like for waxes. I'm just glad you only have a couple. You guys know I use uh, these guys quite a bit. These are one of my favorites. These are kind of a medium sized brush and then I also like these narrow artist brushes for waxes too. I get them all over the place. If I see inexpensive brushes out at a store and it's a different kind that I have, I'll grab it, try it. Um, I grab them off Amazon. Where's my wax here? Well, I tell you, looking through the lens on YouTube, it's like I'm looking down from a cell tower. Like they're <laughs> way up there. They like to make sure you guys can see everything that's <laughs> like I can't hide anything from YouTube. Like it's it's a Google map. You guys are gonna make me have to clean my workspace regularly. It actually is clean out here because I just shipped some pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna choose an artist brush and I'm gonna choose kind of a small guy. Uh, this is the guy I'm gonna choose here. And it's a really cheap, just a synthetic bristle artist brush, and I'm gonna use Annie Sloan wax. It's my favorite wax to use for decorating. It's a little firmer wax. And my wax is actually an old tin, so it's even firmer than what you get when you first buy it. Um, sometimes when I get wax, I will leave the lid off and let it firm up because I like when I'm decorating to use a firm wax. So I just loaded, my paint is unsealed. Um, if you feel a little nervous about doing waxes on paint, then I recommend that you seal your paint beforehand and apply your wax over top. My, I'm going to do the opposite. I, I'm pretty comfortable with putting waxes on raw paint, and I just really like how they look on raw paint. So that's not a rule. That's a personal preference thing. Uh, just know that's what I'm doing is putting this, these waxes on my raw paint. So I outlined this mold here because I want to emphasize it with some shadowing. And I just outlined it in my black wax, and now I'm going to come back with my slightly larger brush. Barely any wax is all I have on here. I'm not using a whole lot when I do this. I'm not using it for protection. I'm using it as a decorative product in this case. It's not sealing my paint. I'm just using it for that little shadowing effect. I, I like, you can use, you know, dry brushing glaze for this same purpose. I like wax because it has this sort of smeary, smudgy effect that you can get. Because um, it's an, you know, this is an oil-based wax. 
And I will tell you guys right now, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm going to hear it, that I'm putting. It's or, already beginning. I am going to seal this. I'm kidding. Um, and everybody's going to flip a lid on me, but I'm working within a low tolerance, okay? I do it all the time. It works fine. Just be aware it's a very low tolerance, but I'm going to put sealer over this oil-based wax, a water-based sealer. I was looking for a lid. A lid? Yeah, to flip. Oh. <laughs> Oh my gosh, the jokes are horrible tonight, guys. Okay, uh, so I'm I'm just taking my wax and it's old and hard, right? So I just it just dip the bristles in there. There's barely any wax going on my brush because a little bit of dark wax goes a long way. And then I'm just gonna sort of like fluff the edges of this. And I'm really just sort of emphasizing where I put that dark gray paint I'm just emphasizing it with a little bit of wax. So usually my paint effects are a combination of paint and waxes. Now that's dry brush, right? You didn't put it, there's no water there's or anything no on that water. brush. There's no water, this is wax that's on here. I'm not doing paint. Um, and it's very little wax. So I'm, yeah, it's a very, it's a dry brushing effect. Oh, sure, it says that's the same technique she used for as a makeup artist in high school. Yes, well a lot that's of- That's a little scary. A lot of the techniques that we do in paint are um, a I talked to a lot of like hairstylists and makeup artists and they can relate to a lot of the techniques because what they do is art too and they uh, hairstylists understand color really well so some of these concepts translate over welcome back Sheila to other industries never put old and hard <laughs> in the same sentence I'm sorry I was asking for it I know I see that's what I missed you for Sheila all right, I'm taking my, I'm back to my small artist brush again, and I'm outlining, I've got some nice carvings here, and I want to emphasize that. So I'm outlining. <laughs> <laughs> she she says it was a scary play. <laughs> when she would do that for, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a smoky eye look. Well, here's my thing. Like I just said, a lot of these translate to like makeup. I can't translate that to makeup. If I do like a smoky eye look, it just looks like I got in a bar fight. <laughs> But, I mean, it's the same concept. I just don't know why it doesn't work for me. So, really, I'm just making my furniture look like it got into a bar fight. Nice. Yeah. It's that girl. I'm going to um, take this dark wax out a little bit and just kind of dry brush it over. This has a, uh, if you guys were here last week, this is a lightly textured paint finish. So, when I just did that wax over the top, I just grabbed a, a little bit of the texture and added some dark wax. Kind of. So, let's say you put too much dark wax on there. Can you back it out with putting some clear since it's not sealed you yet? You can. Yes, you can. But the problem with that is, is then you're playing with, then you've got a lot of wax on your paint. And remember, I still want to seal this. So, really, I would say this is where I get into, it's, it's a lot less reversible. So, if that bothers you at all, I, I accept that. I accept that as a term. And and I know that I'm working with that. So I just I guess I want to share share with you guys that it's possible, but everybody's not always comfortable at the same level. So do what you're comfortable with. It is possible. You can put clear wax on and take it off. Maybe but stuff. you've got to rub that clear wax into your paint. And then you've sealed your paint with wax, and there's a lot of wax on there. And if you still it's want to come to back backwards. and seal it, yep, it's hard to go backwards. So um there are there, there's, you know, there's a lot of things in art that people will tell you there's a right and a wrong way. And I think there's always, there's always play in rules, right? I, I think this when I'm driving too, like speed limits. What? I think there's, what? I think there's play in those rules, rules right? Rules are meant to be broken. Yeah, like, like you can what? go 10 miles an hour over the speed limit and it's, it's a, but you're still speeding, but they're not going to pull you over for it, right? Right? Isn't what? that a rule? No, no it's not. It's not a rule. Do you even know why that came into play? Because <laughs> they don't have enough cops out there, right? No. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are we gonna have to delete please, this? Please make it stop. <laughs> it, it's from the old cars because where you would sit in the seat, the needle would be off by you know five miles or so. The car itself would I be still, off. I still, I'm off. still gonna go with the argument then oh that, my, that the needle in my car is off, even though you don't have a needle in your car. <laughs> Well, wait a minute. If you have a needle in your car, it is not on the dashboard, and then I'm further concerned. <laughs> Even though it's a digital display. Okay, I'm down here. I'll move to the side a little bit so you guys can see. Can you keep going to the left? And I, I'm using a, a, I've got three artist brushes. Well, four. I take that back. I've got four that I'm working with. Okay, we've got Baby Bear and, like, his brother. 
And then we got Mommy Bear and Daddy Bear. So I've got really four brushes and it's a full size variation from from large down to small and oh, wow. everything in between is kind of what I got. What? Huh. I, Some states have it as a written rule. Oh, thank you. Where are those? I'm going to move there. Well, it's not this one. Yeah, I'm not California. Because that would uh, impede their uh, ticket collecting ability in oh, California. Man. They they do like some revenue here. They do like the revenue. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And now, so I'm going basically everywhere that I did the dark paint, I'm going over it and I'm emphasizing that with waxes. So it's a combination of the paint and the wax that's gonna give me this smoky, shady effect. Yeah, definitely shady. And when I was doing the paint last week, I kind of talked to you guys about that I'm, um, I'm using it in places that would probably get a little more wear. I'm also using it to emphasize areas that have pretty moldings on my piece, like this area here. Thank you, though. Someone was paying attention. What? She's laughing back in the day when we had needles on dashes. Yes. <laughs> that was my first car. I didn't have one of those. So I do... Did it? Well, okay, wait. Did it work? Did the um, needle move the, when you were moving? The um, speedometer did work. I don't think it told me if I had gas in the car. I'm pretty sure that didn't function. But you figure that out usually the hard way. Yeah. It'll tell you one way or another. But that's also back in the days where you could go fill up based on, you know, a pocket full of change. Uh, yeah, that's true. Until, you know, until got, you know, gas got more expensive and then it was like $870 to fill up an old car. Huh? I think your math is off. So really, really a light effect. It does not take a lot. But just this light kind of shadowing effect. Okay, so that's... <laughs> Sheila, I bought a brand new Sportage. Got pulled over. You just can't go slow in that thing uh, <laughs> when you go in sport mode. <laughs> yeah, that's a good defense. You can't go slow in it. Officer, you can't go slow. It doesn't work. All right, I'm going to... Officer, I'm speeding because my car might die. <laughs> I'm just letting the very little wax on my brush. I didn't even really fill it for there, and I'm just letting it run over the top of that texture. And again, what kind of wax are you using? This is Annie Sloan wax. I like her wax for and decorating. Color? Black. Um, I like her wax for decorating because it's a firmer wax. So I, I talk about this sometimes, but if I'm using wax for protection, where I want to do an all-over application, it's sealing my paint, then obviously a, 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 a looser less firm wax is nice because then it goes on creamy like butter like that's ideal if you're sealing your piece in wax but when i'm doing just decoration like i am i'm doing a very deliberate placement and i want it to be firmer and stay in the place that i um, have it so or that i put it so i do like the i do like a firmer wax this uh it dries out a little bit and then it gets to a nice firm state and so i like this um, not all waxes are the same, so it can be a matter of choosing one that you prefer. Um, for example, uh, Wise Owl Wax. I used Wise Owl Paint on this. Wise Owl Wax is a is a is that looser wax. So it's a great wax if I'm doing an all-over sealing. Very smooth, glides on like butter, but it doesn't firm up like this. So it just kind of depends on what I'm using the wax for as to what I will prefer in the wax. And then really quick, your color scheme getting to this point. Uh, Wise Owl Paint. And Vintage Duck Egg is the soft blue. A little bit of Isles Avenue, which is a um, creamy white. And then Weather Vane is my charcoal gray. Again, uh, I, I'm probably gonna run out of time to do the paint finish. Okay, this is redesigned with Prima Decor Wax and this color is called Eternal. I use it on just about, just about every piece. Same thing with my black wax. Like these are staples in everything I do. Um, and I just apply this with my finger. This is an old container. It actually comes in tins now. I'm sorry. The tin is the old container. It comes in tubes now. Um, but I have been using the same tin for so long. And I had an old supply. Um, it lasts forever. That's why. Hey, Kitty. No, as far as uh, she just came over from YouTube. Um, asking if you went to the rowing competition. That's next week. Thank, next thank you. Next week. So thank you for asking. You guys, it's been so fun for me. And I'm going to talk a little. I'm going to talk a little bit about this topic. So I hope you don't mind. I'm just putting on my decor wax with uh, my finger. But I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about rowing oh, yeah. and what it is for me and why I've been sharing that. Um, as you guys know, my son uh, started rowing for a crew team, and um, it has literally changed 
changed him completely for the better. He's just a different kid than he was a year ago. I, I don't know if you if you've ever had or, or been or seen one of your kids um, connect with a sport like there's nothing like it. And he's it's a they're a bonded team. They made it to nationals. They qualified for the U.S. nationals for rowing. So we are going there next week. That is in Sarasota, Florida. I'm going to be going with him. Um, but it, it's also changed things for me for the better. So, you know, I love to paint. I'm not ready to be done painting, but it gets to a little bit of a burnout place. And I was there. And so I think for me, it came at a time when I needed a little bit of a break too. So I'm sharing that with you guys, another aspect of my life that I've leaned into as I need a break from painting. And I, I appreciate that you guys have allowed me to share it and wanted to be a part of it with me. It's made it more fun for me. In fact, I posted a contest today. Um, the kids, uh, the teams designed custom uniforms for nationals. Um, and the company that makes them is having a contest on their Instagram page. It's called JL Racing. And the winning team wins $500 in gear from JL Racing. Um, so I put it up on my page. If you guys have a chance, go over to their Instagram page. It's just a click. You don't have to enter any of your information. But vote for our uniform. It's for Capital Crew. There's a men's and a women's uniform in the running. And um, we'd love to have that win before the competition. Um, but I've sh been sharing it because it, it's become a big part of my life at a time that I needed it. And I'm grateful to you guys for sharing it with me. So that kind of explains what it means to me. So next week I will not be live. I will be in Sarasota, Florida at the Youth Rowing Nationals. And I think we have a chance of placing somewhere in the top in the nation, uh, just based on times. Our times look really good. I watched all the finals nationwide to see where we would land. Um, a few teams have dropped out of the running, and it looks like by times only, just from the finals, we would land in about fourth as of right now. So uh, I will put that up when we get there to root us on. Uh, it will be live streamed, and I'm going to be watching in person, and I'm going to be sharing it all next week while I'm in Florida. Sweet, so that's how I get to see it. Prepare for that. I do have furniture content coming too, so don't unfollow me right now. Don't unfollow me yet. <laughs> but thank you, Maureen. She voted. Thank you. Oh, Yvonne, it's on your, uh, you posted it earlier today, right? Yeah, the I link? posted it. I posted the link to my Facebook page uh, but it, and on my Instagram page um, where you can go to vote for them, for the uniform. Uh, I, we were not doing very good on it. So as many votes as I can get, like, I'm, I'm not begging, but I'm begging. Okay, so what I just did while I was talking to you guys about that is I cut my transfer up into pieces. This is a really good transfer to cut up. I doubt I'll use all of it on this piece. I'll probably have quite a bit left over and get a second piece out of it. This is um, a, a new size. This is a maxi transfer. So they have mini, midi, maxi, and then the full size transfers. This is the maxi. Oh, Susan's got a, a good question. By the way, thank you for voting. Can you vote every day? You can vote every day. So it's a it's a bracket system. So every day it gets narrowed down more and more. So if we keep going today, which I have my fingers crossed, we kind of got a bum bracket today because it's usually two teams in the bracket. We got put in a, in a team with in a bracket with three teams. Thank you, Sherry. And so the votes are being split. So um, there's a hot pink uniform in there and we're not, we're losing to the hot pink. I'll just paint a hot, if we win, I'll paint a hot pink piece of furniture and then what? you guys get both. Then you get a, huh? uh, you get the hot pink and we win the competition. How about that? What? All right. So I'm kind of playing with placement on these. And so what I'm looking at on this one is it kind of has a hook shape to it. So I think this would be pretty in this corner here to kind of accent the corner with this floral. And then I'll connect it to this one to help it flow down the door. So I like buildable transfers like this because you can really customize the look with them. Sometimes they come with a predetermined shape if you're less comfortable. So I'm thinking something like this is what I'll do to really frame out these doors. So let's go ahead and apply this. So I cut my piece out and I'm going to start with this top one here. I usually start with whatever my uh, largest piece is. In this case, I'm going to base it off this top one. So we'll start here. Um, once I kind of know my placement, like I dry fit it, I kind of know where I want to put this, right? Oh, I kind of like that placement too. 
So maybe we'll go like that. All right, so I'll dry fit it. And then I take this white backing sheet off and that's gonna be trash. No offense. And then I'm gonna find my placement again. No offense. <laughs> no. Don't feel bad. <laughs> None taken. No, no. It's okay, fine. and now I'm going to commit. So I'm going to press down. <gasps> okay, so I press down my transfer. And then I'm going to find a transfer stick. No. Uh, I usually have right one there. in here. No, that one's got paint on no. it. Can you grab me one out of the drawer over there? Really? I don't like this one. Kind of. This is a plastic one. Drawer. Top drawer right there. Yep, see the whole stack? Oh. Okay, these come in the package with the transfers, but mine's not in a package. So this is just a wooden transfer stick. And I'm gonna rub my transfer on. I go over the entire thing one time using my stick. Oh, when you put on the transfers, how do you avoid the wax getting into the edges and becoming more noticeable? So little wax. Don't put your transfer over wax if you're doing a heavy wax. I mean, so little wax. I can't even explain to you how little wax I'm, I'm using. Um, it's not like a full sealing wax. My paint is, would, if you touched it, it would still feel raw. It doesn't feel like it's been sealed. So that's a, a just a really fine line to walk. If you've sealed your paint with wax, uh, I wouldn't put your transfer over wax. Wax is a resist. It doesn't want to take things over the top of it. Um, so put your transfer on before your wax if you're sealing in your wax. Or if you feel like you're going to get a little heavy handed with your wax even so so little wax you also want to make sure your paint is completely dry uh, transfers do not they're adhesive they don't like any moisture so if your paint is still wet uh, your transfer is not going to want to take you'll have to rub and rub and rub so you can see i kind of found an edge of my transfer and i'm just going to pull it up with my finger do i have my transfer tool in here no i sure don't all right and then I'm rubbing over it. I'm paying attention as I go, making sure that my transfer is staying with my piece. If it were to be stuck on my uh, backing sheet, I would lay that back down, rub over it, and then pull it away again. So I'm just going slow and watching my transfer as I go. Sorry, I'm going to try to get all up in your business, but you got so much crap all over up, here. All up in my business? All up in your business. Okay, let me move that away. Okay, so Sean's going to move. I think probably YouTube because you guys are have a weird view. You guys like Sky closer. Cam. That's <laughs> It's the same camera, I swear, that we use for everything. It's just the angle it puts on it. All right. And I'm almost to the end. As I get to the end, I get more careful because the end is going to be a more sensitive point to pull this backing sheet off of. I don't want to pull my transfer away, so I go nice and slow. So now this is fully detached. This can be discarded, too. The other thing that's kind of nice on this backing sheet is, see these three dots right here? It's color samples from the transfer. So if you wanted to match paint colors, you can take this around and hold it up to paint colors and see what colors match with my transfer. No problem, Trish. Uh, just uh, she said, thanks for zooming in. It's just Brandy has a lot of stuff sitting I in my way. I, I bring out a lot of gear for my lives. Okay, once I've got my transfer all attached, I go over the entire thing with my finger. So I start with my finger because um, I can feel any edges that are lifting, and sometimes if you go with a cloth first, you're not going to feel a lifting edge. So I, I do this first, and then I'll come back with a, these are the um, finishing pads from Redesign with Prima, and they come in a big square like this. This one's well loved, and I cut it into smaller pieces. Okay, so I just cut it apart, and then I'm going to use this small piece, and I'm going to burnish over this whole transfer. And this works out any air bubbles, uh, smooths the edges. These steps are how you get that nice finished edge that's not going to show the halo around your transfer. So I'll burnish around the whole thing. Okay, so that's really, really pretty. I'll go ahead and show you this second piece here. Okay, so on this I already kind of have an idea on my placement. And I could kind of play with it upside down. I think I might like it better like that. I think I might like it better. Okay, so then I take away this backing sheet. And once I find my placement and press it down, I'm kind of committed. Okay, so I think I like it right there. I'm going to commit. And then um, I'm going to rub over the entire transfer. OK, 
Okay, just go one time. It doesn't have to be super aggressive. And then I'm gonna pick up an edge and I'll start pulling away this backing sheet while I rub at the same time, really watching that transfer carefully. I think there is an art to applying a transfer. It's not a slap it on type of sticker application. Number one, uh, there's a lot to be said for design work, designing a transfer layout. You know, this is furniture design that we're doing and uh, figuring out what looks best, um, you know, cutting apart transfers and doing those custom looks, there is a design aspect to it. All right, so that's all applied. I'm gonna really commit, marry it with my fingers, rub over the entire thing. You can, this is a smaller transfer. You're more likely to get air bubbles if you're doing those large six piece transfers. And then I'm gonna use my little piece of my uh, finishing pad and rub this down. All right, so that looks really nice. And then I'm gonna do a third piece that I cut out will be, I think, let's see. I like this transfer too, because it comes with opposite opposing directions for most every piece of the transfer. So I've got a right and a left-hand side on just about every piece on this design. So I can decide on here, okay, do I wanna use this left-hand side or do I like the right-hand side and then my, um, I'll have the matching design on the other side. So I think I like this because it rounds this bottom corner and matches what I've got here. So that looks really nice. You sure you can't go lower? <laughs> so you can't see it in what you're telling me? <clears throat> and find my placement. Or YouTube, seeing what you're thinking right now. <laughs> Sorry, guys. That's what the back of my head looks like. All right, so I would apply that same transfer in the same manner. So that's kind of what I'm going to do. I will repeat the process over on this side. The other thing I wanted to show you on here, one last thing, is on this top. I didn't tape this off or anything. Sorry, you're killing me. What? Way down there, and then we're gonna go well, way cause, up here. Because I showed you these two, I'll apply this third one. It's oh gonna be the gosh. same process. You guys get where I'm going, right? Um, from here, I I'll go ahead and seal this in clear coat. Um, but up here on this top, I went ahead and just painted onto this marble edge. I didn't tape it off or anything. You can tape it off. But all I'm gonna do is come back with a razor blade scraper. Oh, sorry, Denise, if you were over there on YouTube, the comment blew by. I just saw portions of it, but here we go. Have you tried Lily Moon Opulent Paint? I and have. And if you have, how do you, how do you like it? What I you have. It? Um, so Opulent is their all-in-one formula, and all-in-one <clears> paints <throat> are a little bit different. All-in-one means that it doesn't require a sealer um, versus chalky-style paints or mineral paints, which do need to be sealed with a clear coat. Um they don't blend the same. So when I'm doing a finish, maybe like this, uh, this is more of a stippled technique than an actual smooth blend. So you could probably do something like this with opulent. But when I'm doing blended techniques, I usually don't choose an all-in-one paint because they don't blend the same way that chalky style paints do. So I like, I, it's a beautiful paint. Uh, Lily Moon's a nice paint. But um, I would choose the stock chalky style if I was doing a blended finish and for opulent would be more of like solid single color finishes um, versus some of these decorative finishes. Does that make sense? So all I'm going to do, and this, you know, this takes probably the same amount of time that taping this off would. So I think it just gets to be personal preference. And then I, I have to clean the top anyways because it's going to have dust on it. And stuff. Well, and tape has a cost. But I can get... Your labor is free. I can get a nice... What? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just did a, I just did a video this week with uh, Bianca from Lowe's Theory. That, no, our labor should not be free. Um, so, and then I can get a nice clean line by just running my razor blade scraper right along there. And I've got a nice clean line at the edge of the marble. That's oh, wow. Way to, way to turn this around. What? Sherry wants to know, after watching hours of instruction, how confident am I in for my furniture painting skills? Um, Absolutely the a, same as before any uh, of this on happened. On a scale of zero to zero, what, zero? Yeah, yeah. Like, 0 0.5 like, like maybe? Maybe a negative one. Yeah, yeah okay. Right in there, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I go with a good attitude and that's about it. Um, hey, Fireball June. No, but I told Sean, because Sean has a page called Sprayed by Sean. Everybody go 
give, give that a follow. Yeah. Up. It's, a, it's a very busy page. Actually, it's, it's, no, yeah. no content on nope. it. Um, but I told him he does my spraying and he always films it for me. I said, just start posting the spraying videos up there. You already take them anyways. Like, it, it's content, right? And it would be sprayed by Sean content because it's usually him spraying the pieces yeah. for me. Nobody wants that. Um, I usually spray clear coat on all my pieces. I brush my paint but spray my clear coats. And um, Sean usually does that for me. It's a way that it helps me out tremendously. Um, it's He's more technically inclined, whereas I'm more artistically inclined. So he absolutely can manage a sprayer better than I can. Yeah. Um, and um, it's a huge, huge help. So usually it's him spraying, spraying my friendship line. Yeah, right? that's, that's about it. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna finish this transfer down here. I didn't get to putting this the paper on, so I think we'll do that next week. We'll finish this piece off next week with clear coat, putting that paper on, and all the finishing touches. I'll show you. Oh, I'm sorry, not next week because I won't be live oh. next week. Oh, yeah. That's kind um, of a sore subject. Usually, Thanks. when I miss my lives, I try to not miss them. <clears throat> usually, when I miss my lives, uh, it's because I'm just working somewhere else. But this is actually a trip that I'm just going to enjoy. I can't wait. I'm super excited. I'm going to share it with you guys because I think it's a pretty big deal to go to the youth nationals for rowing. Like, Sorry to interrupt you. Cindy wants to know if I'm hiring. I have no budget. Um, yes, he is, no. he is hiring. It does not pay well at all. And Cindy, I know you don't even live in our same state. So, yeah. <laughs> so you're, the I benefits must, suck. must be willing to commute. You cannot work remotely. No benefits, no vacation plan, and no pay either. It's, it's a, I mean, it's lucrative. We don't get many responses to our job posts. Lucrative, yes. <laughs> so, um, so I'll I be pay in fun. I'll be sharing the youth nationals for rowing. I mean, the top what per, what percent of kids make it to this competition nationwide? It's amazing. I can't. Oh, I and you just take the percentage from cap. How many kids are going compared to how many are there? Oh yeah, I mean we have what a hundred kids on our team, and uh, seven made it. Seven men, um, and this is our first year of rowing, so it's just been a spectacular year. I've learned so much. I love the sport. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, the camaraderie in these teams, the effort these kids put in. My son has been training six days a week. Six days a week he trains for this. So, yeah. And, really? And, and Sean or I sit. What, what's on day seven? Sean or I sit as on the seventh day he rests. Like I tell him. Yeah. <laughs> like, nobody remembers second. Right? Yeah. Oh, Sean or I sit at the aquatic center while he rows six days a week because he cannot drive. <laughs> He's too young. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, yes, we are dedicated along with him being dedicated. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop off. Like I said, I won't be live here next week, but I will have a YouTube video that goes up this week and next week. I pre-painted some pieces for you guys, so my pages will keep flowing. And I'll also be sharing the rowing content aside from that too. I'll share with you guys the live feed if you want to watch the races with us when we get to all the different stages. It's pretty fun to watch. And um, thank you guys for the support too and enjoying it along with me. It makes it more special for me too. So I'm going to pop off and let you go. Check out my YouTube channel, Brush by Brandy. Uh, there will be a weekly tutorial up there this week um, and next week. And um, yeah, other than that, I'll be at the Painters Business Academy September 1st through 3rd in the UK. So check that out. Annie Sloan will be there. Jonathan Mark Mendez, Kasha Furniture, Redesign with Prima will be there. There's demos. There's business discussions. It's a fantastic event. The location is amazing. It's like an old manor home built in 1820. Looks like a yeah, castle. Yeah, super cool. It's yeah. gorgeous. I can't wait. I cannot wait. It's a great event. I'm, I'm going to bring my archaeology equipment. Yeah, like, you guys just, just go on. check out the, the Painters Business Academy and see where the venue is because it's spectacular. I mean, Europe has everything better than we do anyways, but uh, as far as architecture. All right, you guys, I'm going to pop off. You guys have an amazing weekend, and I'll catch you in two weeks live again.